Thank you very much, Aristides, uh, Dr. Papa Christidis. Uh, first, let me welcome you all to this um, uh, seminar, international webinar, and also join my colleague, um, uh, Dr. Papa Christidis, in thanking the Technical Chamber of Greece, and particularly Yana Lagnostaki and President Stasinos for their support in making this um, uh, mission uh, possible. But above all, I would like to thank and introduce actually two of our close collaborators, uh, good uh, Turkish colleagues and friends, uh, that will be sharing uh, with you the experience from the Turkey side, which uh, obviously had to handle this uh, devastating situation. And they will give us their precious insight uh, with respect to the um, activities uh, in the recovery phase and the lessons learned uh, while uh, uh, joining the presentations from other speakers. So without further delay, let me just introduce uh, Dr. Um, Recep Reid Chakir, uh, who is presenting uh, AFAD Clearing uh, House. Uh, Dr. Chahir has been one of our contact points and he has been doing brilliant work in coordinating international missions. I think we've got many things to learn from his experience. We're delighted to have him with us and I just yield the floor to him to uh, give us his further insight. Thank you. Uh, Kalispera, um, and my name is Ray Chakir and I am uh, here to represent the uh, AFAD Earthquake Clearinghouse uh, liaison uh that's my role and uh, so right after the the earthquake uh i was in contact with uh afat uh general director of uh earthquake risk uh, reduction program uh doctor uh professor doctor uh orhan tatar um so i will just briefly show uh, some pictures and uh, what we did and how that's important for us uh especially the we share the, the uh, a lot of things and i don't think the earthquake has a boundary at this point and um so i was talking to uh, professor anastasius um uh we have a common enemy is called earthquake uh, so we uh, can uh, further work on this uh, earthquake clearinghouse uh, early studies. Um, so anyway, that's just the uh, probably everybody's like the, there are three earthquakes. Uh, first one pro possibly is well expected. And then uh, second uh, earthquake after nine hours, um, that was totally unexpected and so that uh that case is uh devastated entire country um and so this is a lot of uh damage and uh, a loss of lives and building economic damage was uh, humongous even larger than uh 1939 in the earthquake in 1999 um so my action uh was um I'm currently is in uh, based in uh olympia washington pacific northwest uh washington state uh, in us um so uh communication uh, remotely was uh, not going well after a uh, second earthquake uh the all the agencies and they were all paralyzed uh uh the operation wise for a while but eventually they recovered uh the cases but um for the earthquake clearinghouse uh we were working on it uh before uh this earthquake uh, sequence so it was after a uh, samos earthquake we had uh discussions and how to coordinate next earthquake big earthquake case uh and then um so I was bringing the issue about the clearinghouse uh, problem. And so that would be the solution for the coordination issues. So uh, doc, thanks to Dr. Tatar, and uh, he established uh, some paperwork and policy in the background for uh, earthquake clearinghouse case uh, and in their operations, uh, the response operations in uh, before this earthquake so that helped us to uh set the background uh officially 
so that it was only just uh, the operation case. So, uh, but the problem is uh, no one knew uh, how to do it uh, except me and a few people in, and then ERI uh, knew that uh, how to establish these. So we did the practice in Pacific Northwest um, a lot about this. And uh, so uh, it was great interest to, uh, for me to establish it and then parallel to uh, uh, this uh, efforts here in US and around the world, uh, then make it in Turkey and uh, maybe uh, Greece will follow up and uh, do this uh, case. So what is the earthquake clearinghouse is uh, the coordination, uh, post earthquake coordination for uh, engineers, uh, investigators uh, and scientists. And then it's the uh, physical portion. And there is uh, also a um, uh, virtual portion of it. And so it's the two stages. And the physical, uh, that's what we did uh, right after this earthquake. In uh, eight days later, we established this uh, clearing house. And so that it would be during the uh, uh, recovery and uh, rescue teams were uh, in the field. Uh, we knew uh, the uh, a lot of international interests uh, and the scientists will be flowing uh, around. Uh, and so that's the, the case I uh, led and coordinated and I uh, played the li liaison between uh, US and other countries in Europe and Greece and uh, all others uh, among uh, to communicate with the Turkish government uh, through AFAD. So um, this is uh, the case. And um, so thanks to uh, Dr. Tatar, uh, he is uh, well uh, aware of this situation and he actually uh, put the, all the background and uh, help us to establish this clearinghouse. And, and then we announced it uh, yeah, on uh, February uh, six, 16, uh, uh, about 10 days later is uh, uh, we were uh, talking about the, uh, and calling, announcing the uh, earthquake clearing house is alive and uh, expecting all the uh, uh, visitors, uh, scientists and coordination in this center. Uh, so we had briefings. Uh, here's the uh, Ankara Afat um, uh, Operation Center, Emergency Response Operation Center. And also we immediately communicate with USGS and uh, Mehmet Celebi is the USGS representative arrived in Turkey. Uh, so currently also they are uh, working post earthquake studies in short term. Uh, still in Turkey. Um, so what we did is uh, first thing to establish uh, a communication application. So we tried a, a earthquake engineering research institutes uh, a tool uh, application. Uh, it was fulcrum and uh, but however that didn't fit in the Turkish uh, information technology policy case. So what we did is we uh, called uh, ESRI's uh, Turkey representative and uh, they established everything is uh, uh, based on the policy uh, of tur Turkish uh, information technology national policy. Uh, and then we uh, were ready in two days uh, with the servers and applications uh, using our uh, uh, ESRI system. And also thanks to uh, ESRI Turkey, and they helped humongously. And thanks to ESRI Center in uh, California, uh, they also uh, opened the, all the system uh, from the headquarter. Uh, so uh, they do it in the, uh, for the big disasters like this. And so we, uh, we got really benefit from them and uh, so this earthquake clearinghouse uh, had in the background many, many uh, uh, supports uh, to make it alive. Um, so we used here um, 
some applications for the field operations, we used ArcGIS Survey 123. Whoever visiting the Turkey and trying to go to field work and sharing the data for uh, with the earthquake clearing us, uh, they were required uh, to use the ArcGIS Survey 123. And co uh, this communicates with the AFAT uh, ArcGIS server and uh, automatically sending the data from the uh, field. And also we use the dashboard uh, at the center to uh, watch the operations and immediately download and send the information to official uh, responders uh, and important uh, decision makers uh, so that uh, they can get benefit from uh, rapid recovery uh, processes uh, and decision making. And uh, also we used some of those um, uh, workforce uh, case uh, and to follow the some uh, you know field operations and field uh, uh, investigators where they are is for their safety. And uh, so uh, we can watch in where they are moving and where uh, also the location of their, uh, their uh, position even though, uh, so that was the daily base uh, practice in uh, during that time. Yeah. So anyway, this is the, uh, <laughs> some information uh, I can, uh, so for example, is example of this uh, uh, AFAT uh, earthquake clearing house uh, application. So here is the ground deformation, uh, uh, investigators, uh, about 164 people uh, or entrants, uh, 164 entrants for this example, for one group. Um, and uh, so we can have those information directly to our center uh, in Ankara. Um, and then here's the example uh, from the location and uh, pictures, videos, uh, uh, and then uh, those other uh, universities, for example, here's the, we customized uh, based on the team's uh, requests. Uh, we customized the applications quickly. So I recommend to use this uh, ESRI uh, uh, case in, uh, I mean, application. It's very easy uh, uh, and uh, it's very handy during the, right after the uh, earthquakes, uh, major earthquakes. And here's some applications. Um, there are uh, ground deformations, uh, even container uh, cases and following the containers and where they are going and uh, how many needs and then they are established and that kind of, and then uh, tent uh, uh, management. So our uh, earthquake uh, engineering and science uh, investigations also expanded to recovery issues and uh, some uh, uh, wastewater uh, uh, monitoring cases and strong ground motions. There are a couple of examples. Here's the building, uh, building structures and uh, so one group uh, went and then uh, sent those. Um, and here's the detail, uh, it's pretty uh, good. And it's also a GIS environment and uh, it's, it can be exported quickly uh, to be used in other GIS uh, related uh, operations uh, or uh, decision-making process. Um, And then also we uh, sent people to the field uh, to check the uh, strong ground motion uh, stations uh, because that was a big interest in if there was uh, any uh, damage or any uh, problem uh, at the stations uh, because uh, some of the stations are uh, recorded uh, anomalous uh, PGA values. Um, all right, um, so these are the case and then this is the most important case and we also use this uh, for um, 
rock falls and uh, and then landslides. Um, this is also damage assessment. This is uh, uh, NASA's JPL uh, ARIA products. And also uh, in Singapore, Earth Science Group uh, sent us uh, damage proxy maps. And we use them as a background in the mountainous areas uh, and for the rock falls. And we uh, saw that uh, some of those uh, cases uh, pretty good match uh, and then indicating the rock falls or landslides, that means the surface deformation and it, they were picked up very well. Um, so uh, also INSAR, uh, besides the INSAR, that was Coulomb failure uh, was uh, uh, pretty much good uh, uh, main interest uh, because this sequence of the earthquakes uh, is uh, expected and uh, so after second one the third one was expected in the south in exactly what happened and but the north uh, east one was already uh, uh, ruptured in in 2020 and so this is uh, um, and showing the next uh, possible uh, stress loads um, here and here uh, this one happened and so it looks like around here and uh, in this uh, direction. So it's mostly the aftershocks uh, uh, was developing. And another uh, case we were getting help from USGS. Uh, there were uh, aftershock uh, forecast. And so they are uh, pretty important uh, forecasts and uh, so uh, emergency managers we're looking for uh, if there is a possibility of the uh, another uh, major aftershock uh, might happen because the the third one also killed uh, people in uh, uh, who were trying to enter the heavily damaged buildings. So. Um, this is, uh, I will cut this one and then, uh, but uh, I was uh, saying this happened uh, and this needs to be uh, improved more, uh, earthquake clearing us. Uh, that needs uh, partners, uh, especially the Greece and uh, Turkey get a partnership about uh, working on this earthquake clearing us in the both side uh, and then, uh, train uh, their investigators uh, for post-earthquake reconnaissance uh, teams uh, about this one. And that will be a very good uh, information built and to support emergency manager, managers, decision makers, and, uh, and then uh, first responders too. Uh, and uh, eventually it will be going for further how to get uh, these lessons from these earthquakes. And that's the earthquake clearing house uh, issue. So earthquake clearing house will play a role next uh, for the next earthquake and uh, uh, using these uh, information and sharing them with the engineers and scientists uh, and then uh, decision makers uh, uh, to, to do further uh, uh, research or uh, studies, uh, and this will be the hub uh, at the uh, AFAT, uh, connecting all of those information for this earthquake and getting ready for uh, the next earthquake. 